Warren, I wasn't worried what anybody <laughs> said I was coming home regardless, you okay. know, I'd rather have come home to be with my family and obviously yes. with my two boys, they, they, not, they don't know me to be like that, yes, so right, obviously yeah. for them it was also a big shock, but uh, at the same time it sort of opened my eyes a bit more, yes. you know, to sort of take more care of my stuff and all of that. Well, it's just the two of us today, and it's not Andrew Harrison and Warren Lee Inferno, it's Sean Veal and Warren Lee Inferno, my bushy head friend. You know what it's like to be semi retired? He's <laughs> either in the game reserve or fishing, or I don't know what he's doing, Sean, but uh, this time he's fishing. He's fishing. Can you beautiful, it? beautiful. Is That's it? how you want your retirement. That's how to you be. want your semi retirement, absolutely. And there's a picture that maybe uh, the team has put up because there's a picture <laughs> of Andrew holding this magnificent fish in the Stackfontein Dam, which is crystal clear water. Uh, I didn't know that. And uh, they catch and release, catch and release. Do you like fishing? Not really, I'm not, not really. a fisherman. No, I'm not a fisherman too, me too, absolutely no. If I want to go and fish or eat fish, I go to the shop, open the fridge and buy them. Uh, exactly. Correct. <laughs> Sean Veal is our guest today. Are you well, brother? Yes, very well, Good, Warren. good, no, fantastic. Lovely to have you on, on, on our podcast. And the reason why we've got you on our podcast is we know that we've had you before as a guest and you've explained to us your career, uh, your winners, etc. Uh, but s sadly, you suffered a, a fall and you've come back from quite a bit of an injury. And that's the reason why we want to chat to you about that and find out how you're doing and how you're healing up. Uh, but some people out there might say, well, that incident happened a long time ago. Why are you only bringing Sean onto the podcast now? But the reality is you've been recovering. Yes, you know, we have to recover, Warren, and uh, rehabilitation and all of that stuff. So all's going well so far, so I'm happy to be back. Um, let's, let's go all the way back to where did the injury take place? Which race course, which province? Tell us about where this, this, this incident happened. Obviously, it happened in Cape Town, Durbanville, you know. Uh, I had uh, my first two rides of the day and they ran quite good races. I was expecting to have a nice day and then obviously in the third race my strip leather snapped, which has never happened but uh, it's part of racing yeah. and uh, obviously it was a nasty one. It could have been much worse but uh, I'm back and that's the main thing. Obviously I got a lot of support worldwide, Cape Town, Hong Kong, Australia, all my friends. All their well wishes, you know, mm. from a couple of owners or so in the game. A lot of my friends, family, obviously all behind me 110% and uh, I'm glad to be back. Sean, let's, uh, ex let's elaborate a little bit on, you mentioned stirrup leather broke. Now, for those that are out there in the public might not understand that. And also, the reason is to highlight the importance. Yes, we know that a jockey is a chosen career, it comes with its uh, risks. Uh, if you're a pilot, it's a, your chosen career it comes with risks. Everything comes with risks and, and those are our chosen careers. But it still doesn't mean that we don't have to highlight the importance and the danger of it. Stirrup leather broke, I mean, it's something that you can never see, you can never foresee, it's just boom, it, it happens. And in, in a second you're sitting on the horse beautifully and in the next, literally second, you're gone. You know, because if it was a straight race, Warren, I would have, by 99% of the time, I would have stayed on. But it happened as we took the turn. Yes. And uh, obviously, the day before I was in PE, it was raining there. I normally don't use that saddle in, P in PE. I only use it in my Durban saddle, but I don't have kit in PE. So obviously, I used my Durban kit. And uh, I'd use the same saddle in Cape Town. And obviously, not really checking it properly like I normally do and uh, it almost cost me, you know, but uh, it's part of our game, like, like I said, and uh, it'll just, you know, they, they always say you can never be too cautious and uh, obviously it was a learning curve because I got to see now also at the same time who's my friends, mm. you know, and uh, I'm just so blessed with the family I got behind me and obviously 
from here, it's just look forward to my racing. You say that it was on a, the incident happened on a turn um, and, and compared to a straight. Now, is that because obviously you're on a turn, so everything's at a bit of an angle and there's more pressure on the one stirrup leather and the one, the one iron? You know, Warren, because the momentum was level with the horse, then obviously when, you, when you're going around a turn, you sort of adjust your body to the turn. Yes. You know, and all my weight was sort of leaning towards the turn. Yes. Because it happened as we just took the turn. I, it happened so quick, I didn't have time to react, you yes, know, yes, and yes. Uh, that's what cost me okay, my That's fortune. interesting though, it's interesting, that's a great point, because I didn't even think of that. As you say, you're adjusting your body weight around the turn, and you're just putting obviously slightly more pressure, and it hit that yeah. weak spot. Okay. Now, um, and you talk about friends and family and support, there is absolutely nothing worse. Now, everybody, whether it's a friend, not a friend, an acquaintance, you know, you see accidents and whatever it is, you, 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 your heart drops. But if it's somebody that you know personally and in, intimately, it's, it's even worse. And I, and I remember the day, and I say how I know Sean Veal uh, personally and intimately, my very, very first winner uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an owner, my own colours, black and yellow silks. What was the horse's name? Smashing Boy. That's it, Smashing Boy. My very first winner was ridden by this man. Uh, you were probably in your second year, I mean, you just started riding at the academy. I was in my second year, second yeah, year, yeah, when absolutely. I rode your first winner. Yeah, unbelievable. So that's how, that's how, how many years I've known my good friend Sean Veal. But back to him. Um, so that's how it happened. Now, you hit the deck and uh, did you, were you knocked out immediately? What, oh, what do you remember from? I remember the whole four, okay, Warren, you know, okay. like I was probably out for like a second or two. Okay. And then once I came around, obviously the first thing what goes through your mind is my family. Yes. And obviously because I'm in Cape Town, my wife is here. Definitely she watches yes. all my racing and uh, she was actually at the breast cancer awareness function. Okay. And she was watching under the table. Oh, on the phone. Oh, gosh. And okay. uh, she obviously saw this fall and obviously she knows me. If I don't get up, there's always a problem. Yes. And uh, not getting up, she sort of panicked. And then obviously she got in contact with my brother, my eldest brother, he was there with his son. And they kept her updated and obviously Justin for Mark kept them updated and MJ kept Max them all updated. So they were all sort of knowing how I'm doing, how I'm coping. Obviously it looked worse on TV. Yes, yes. But uh, I'm forever blessed Warren, with the family and friends I got. And then off to hospital you went, um, so they, st they had to stabilise you on course and do the, the regular, you know? The yes, you know, they stabil stabilised us on the course and uh, obviously because of the shock to the body, I couldn't, they couldn't really find a vein and stuff like that. And then when they found a vein, all the meds went in and then <laughs> obviously not realising that I broke my nose in two places and I broke my jaw. I was more concerned about my collarbone and my knee because that was the pain I was feeling, okay, you know. Okay, okay. And uh, obviously at the same time they, they stabilised that and not realising that my jaw was broken. Sure. And then went to hospital and then obviously went for all the x-rays, everything was fine, obviously a lot of soft tissue damage and then while I was laying waiting for my x-rays, I, I video called my wife, I said, is this normal? Stuck my three fingers in my mouth oh. and pushed my jaw out, you no, know. Sure. And uh, she said, no, you've got to call the doctor. So obviously I called the doctor, I said, listen, I think there's a problem here. Sure. And that's how we discovered that yes. I broke my jaw. Yes. <laughs> because of all the story? medication, I was on cloud on nine, cloud nine. Yes. <laughs> so I never really felt any damage here because of all the pain, sure, sure, you know, but sure. lucky we found it before we did the nose operation and then we did obviously the jaw at the same time. Sean, if you told, if, if, if I walked in and met you and, and not known you from a bar of soap and what you'd just currently been through um, and said that you'd broken your jaw and that you'd broken your nose in two places and I look at you now, Yes, you're still in the recovery phase and you, you know, you, you, I would say 98% just looking at you and listening to you there. Um, 
they've done a fantastic job. Wow. I mean, you, you, you really, if you said to me that you'd broken your nose in two places and broken your jaw, I would say you were not talking nonsense. You know, the surgery was obviously four hours and uh, for me it felt like forever because I think I went in at, I think it was eight o'clock in the morning. Okay. And then obviously I woke up at six o'clock that evening because of all the medication and, uh, but it was such a big relief to have yes. all this done. You would never say I had surgery yeah, done. absolutely fantastic. And, and you, you can certainly uh, commend your doctors and surgeons. They've done a fantastic job. When did, when did Max fly down to you? She, she must have wanted to get there immediately. Yeah, you know, obviously we got two kids. Yes. So that's also another thing. And uh, obviously my wife's family uh, obviously know about the fall and they took care of my kids here. Max flew down the Monday to Cape Town. Obviously, I was discharged on Monday. I had a su surgery the Sunday. I was discharged on Monday, and then the Tuesday we flew back home. Okay, sure. Mm. So you, you were able to fly back oh, sort of, I mean, was that sort of your decision, or did you say, come on, I want to go home to my own bed and to my own surroundings? I mean, do, should you not have waited a bit longer, or did the surgeons give you the all clear? Warren, I wasn't worried what anybody said I was coming home regardless, you know. Okay. I'd rather have come home to be with my family, and obviously, yes. With my two boys, they they not they don't know me to be like that. Yes, so shame, obviously yeah. for them it was also a big shock. But uh, at the same time, it sort of opened my eyes a bit more, yes. you know, to sort of take more care of my stuff and all of that. But Max flew, and then we flew home the Tuesday morning, and then obviously rehab started. I think it was a week after that when I could sort of put pressure on my knee. I couldn't really move my shoulder because there was a lot of soft tissue damage yes. there. And, uh, but my wife that she is, you know, she's just qualified now to do her concert for her physio. So she helped me with most of my rehab. Okay, okay. And, uh, she loves doing it. <laughs> so you were, you were sort of like the guinea pig, the test, the, the, which you was You know, fantastic. and uh, like for her to get me back so quickly, she's done it before. And uh, yeah, so she's like my rock, you know. Yeah, she yeah, she yeah. does majority of my things I need to be done. And uh, she got me to where I am now. We're going to talk a bit more about your family just now, but I just want to wrap up the rehabilitation side. So, so the rehab was mainly the shoulder and then I mean, you, did you, would you, you would have had to have had some rehab for the face and the jaw, I mean, or, or not really. The, nothing, the field, nothing, nothing, Warren. Obviously, I couldn't eat meat with the Rugby World Cup. That's my <laughs> game, you know, and uh, I couldn't, I could bribe, but I couldn't eat the meat. So <laughs> that was tough. But uh, obviously, the person I am, strong world person, I wasn't really worried about anything, you know. And uh, I think it, was, it took me six weeks and then I started eating meat again, you know. <laughs> that first piece of steak must have tasted delicious. You know, I'm a very big chop fan and okay. uh, the first chop I had was phenomenal <laughs> and I cooked it myself, so it was even better. <laughs> Shawnee, um and yeah, you, you know, you say you're a strong man, which is what you, what you are. And of course, these little knocks we have in life make us wiser and make us more alert, etc. Uh, not that we weren't wiser or alert in the past, but I'm just saying they just make us be a bit more alert and, and appreciative of things. Uh, but you are a strong person. You're a strong-minded person. You're a happy person. You're full of jokes. I mean, you, often I walk past a jockey room, I can hear your voice booming, you're laughing. Uh, that would have also been a huge help to you and your family to motivate and to get you better and on the road again. Yes, as I say, you know, you get a little agitated or you get a little whatever, but being strong and, 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 and courageous, that helps, surely. You know, Warren, I was in a lot of pain. Obviously, mentally, I took a bit out of me. Sure, of but course. the family support I got, friends and family also motivated me. And obviously... My wife didn't sort of just let me just do anything. She made sure that when the rehab started that we covered 110%. Yes. Also what helps, I have my older son now start a gym with me just to motivate him also so I could show him one or two of the ropes how I do gym and obviously we got a personal trainer. 
and uh, that sort of motivated me more and obviously I love racing yes. so <laughs> sitting on the couch at home watching racing it was very hard but I can imagine obviously it's tough but that's part of our game but now you're back that's the most important thing and that's the most exciting thing and that's the most encouraging thing you're back and in fact you've already had a good couple of rides back uh, and being the the funny person and the and the chirpy person that you are you've said well i'm back i've had a couple of places but now we need the winner which will come of course but what is that feeling when you swung your leg over i'm sure obviously you would have done it at work first but the first time back you sit on your horse you're in the saddle you are maybe one of your favorite horses it must be the most it must be like a kid in a candy store you must think i'm back i'm back to what i'm born to do you know when i got into the first horse obviously it was my wife was here in the morning and uh, I was only allowed to ride two horses, <laughs> which, which was, was irritated killing you. Me. I was going to say, yeah, I was irritated but, uh, you. But you know, it was part of my rehabilitation, and uh, obviously, my wife is as strong-headed as as I am, mm -hmm. and uh, she just said two is enough for the first morning. And when I trotted down, obviously, the feeling was sensational, and uh, it's it's. It's nice to be back, but it's always better when you ride at first winner. Yeah, well, I'm hoping, like, I'm hoping and holding thumbs that, uh, you know, I'll be working at the races and either myself or whichever colleague I'm working with on the day is there to do the interview so we can celebrate with you and, and be with you. And I'm sure that uh, it will be very, very soon. Then, uh, stable, you ride a lot for, well, not a lot for, you are the stable jockey to Stuart Ferry. Uh, you ride a lot for Duncan Howells and you've got other trainers that support you but obviously they were you know you're back they've opened up the noms all things normal again and they would have been happy to see you I'm sure yes you know obviously myself and Shuey go way back and uh, working for Shuey when you were working with Mr. Jai we always had a good you know a relationship and obviously for him it was tough when I mm. felt because he just starting you know yes yes and uh, obviously it knocked, sort of knocked me not to having, but at the same time, I was always supportive of, of him. And obviously Duncan, I spoke to Duncan almost every week, at least twice a week, three times probably, race days I spoke to him. And uh, that always keeps the relationship strong. And before I fell off, obviously I was doing well for both yards. And at the same time, like, for me to ride for Duncan again is absolutely like incredible, you know, because we go way back myself and Duncan, we have our ups and downs. <laughs> but uh, obviously it's nice to ride for him and Stewie and obviously Mr. Rivlin also throws me his rides here and there now that I'm back. And uh, so we, we're grateful, you know, in the, I've sort of based myself opened my arms to these three stables and obviously wherever else I can get a ride, I would obviously give it 110 percent. They're also very, you know, because it doesn't happen all the time, but it can happen, it does happen sometime where Stewie wants you to ride in the one race, Duncan might want you to ride in another, which makes it difficult, but now you're dealing with gentlemen that are, you know, understand that, are, that want you, you want your services and they you know, yeah, I'm sure maybe, you know, you say, well, some owners might say, oh, well, it's a pity we couldn't have got Sean, but he has to ride for his stable. But it must make it a little difficult, but it must be in a nice situation to deal with guys that understand the game. That say, okay, well, you have to ride for your stable jockey. You know, you can do each other a favor every now and again. You know, like Warren, like, like you said, is doing a favor. And at the same time also, I've got my own family to support too. So I, sometimes I look for the better ride. Yes. And then he say Duncan's got a better horse or Stewie's got a better horse. I'd rather ride the better one, which I think has got more of a chance of winning the race. Sure. And, you know, the more, like in our game, the more winners you ride, the more support you get. Obviously, my fall came at the wrong time because I was absolutely flying. And you were just started traveling, isn't it? And you were I, all over the you place. You know, I, I opened, sort of opened the door in PE. The next day I fell off. So... <laughs> It's part of our game, it's, it's, it's sort of a learning curve, but at the same time, I'm so motivated Warren, there's nothing what will keep me down. Yeah. I hate negative people, so the more people are negative, the more I make a sort of a joke out of it or yes, something. Yes. And in our game, a lot of people can sort of, you can sort of find a negative energy 
but it's what you make of it. Yes. And for me, personal opinions and stuff, I don't care what people say about me. Yeah. It's what Sean Veal does, you know, and uh, where I come from and stuff like that. I've worked to where I am. So, and I know I can ride. So if you give me the chance, I'm going to give you 110%, yes, yes, you know. Yeah. And uh, that's why I'm forever blessed of what I've done for myself and where I am now at the moment. Positivity is the way to go. And, and you can see in your whole attitude, that's, that's what, and, and I like your sense of humor and your bubbliness as well. And, and you're quite right. Now, what is the, 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 the plans for Sean Veal? I mean, are you going to, obviously, once you've had your, back, your winner back and you're in full swing, are you going to travel a bit more again? Because there's big horses down there. <laughs> you know, it's only my, it's going to be my third meeting back on Sunday. I'm going back to Cape Town. Okay. <laughs> so for the merchants, Cape Merchants, which I've won before. Okay. So obviously, getting the call from Mr. Sands, obviously, once again, just opens the door again, you know, for Cape Town. And... Uh, I wanted to give my, my body like sort of time to recover and but what and I'm I'm not getting younger at the same time I know when I'm ready and I'm I'm, I'm basically ready for any challenge that comes and uh, I'm excited to go back to Cape Town to see what they've done to the sure, course it looks magnificent yeah, yeah. and uh, obviously riding on Sunday like my wife is hoping I don't have my first winner there. <laughs> but at the same time, she's hoping that I have a winner just to boost my confidence yes, a little yes, bit yes. more. Well, I watched for what it's worth. Uh, I've watched all your rides because obviously I watch racing every day across the country, uh, but yours in particular. Um, and yeah, I see, I see, uh, in fact, yeah, I, I saw nothing wrong before and I see nothing wrong again. I just see the same Sean Veal that's vigorated. Uh, riding with zest and, and just wanting to get to the line first. So nothing's changed there and, and is what I'm saying. So it's going to happen soon one of these days, the winner. There's no doubt about that. You know, like Sunday was difficult with all this rain. I thought I would have my first winner back, but it's fine. It wasn't meant to be. <laughs> like I said to my wife, it's fine. It's another stepping stone in my life. I think I know the horse that you are uh, talking uh, about. <laughs> exactly. So for me, I just got to sort of just put my head down, hope it happens on Sunday. If it doesn't, I know Wednesday will definitely happen. Sean, uh, I just, uh, this is not a tipping show as I tell everybody. Um, I just want to quickly go on so the viewers can also take note uh, to see, of course, because we don't uh, race in KZN this weekend. So the next time your ride is on Sunday and then the next time is in KZN, uh, Wednesday at Hollywood Bet Scottsville, which those scratchings are not even finalized yet. They're doing those today. But let's just have a quick look at, uh, tell the public who you're riding on, on Sunday. Um, and uh, yeah, so you've got lovely, you've got rainbow colors in the third race, my bestie in the fourth race, Summer Night City in the fifth, we can go all night in the seventh, and Busy Lizzie in the ninth. So those are your rides, and uh, we can go all night as your feature rider. Yeah. Right, for, for Mr. Sam. Yeah. Okay, so we'll keep an eye on you. Um, yeah, as I say, it's not a tipping show, but I mean, who do you think could be your best chance down there? And, and Obviously, maiden races are always easier, yeah, easier yeah, yeah. you know, and I know the horse I'm riding in the maidens. And then obviously, Busy Lizzie, I've won, and I've run, okay. I think, four seconds on her, three seconds. So she must have a chance. We can go all night's competitive race, mm. but he is a Kenilworth 1200 meter specialist. So, you know what, I'm You're hopeful. in with a chance, absolutely. That's, that's the point I'm trying I've to get. Got you got a chance, you know. Then the last thing I want to talk about, Mr. Uh, you got that nickname, Vili Vali. <laughs> <laughs> now tell us about, that's just come to me now, because that is your nickname from many, many years ago. Who gave you that name? Refresh my memory. I, I think it was actually you, Warren, who really gave me that name, <laughs> Vili Vali, that time when I was riding for Duncan. That's, I think, where that name came from, from uh, you and Duncan. Uh, it was so long ago that I can't even remember that I gave it to yeah. you, but it's always stuck with me, Vili Vali. And a couple of others call you Vili Vali, I think, too. Yeah. There was that, uh, it was that, that comedy, that, <laughs> the, not comedy show. That, the show, the Vili <laughs> yeah. Vali show, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, last thing I want to talk about is, is your family. You've always made it very, um, 
knowledgeable and you've made it very public that your family is your life and that's exactly how it should be um, and you always dedicate your wins to them and, and talk about your kids. How are the kids? How's everybody strong? And, and it's just wonderful that you're a proud family man. Yeah, you know, Warren, it's what I work for. My kids, my wife, obviously. You know, you have your ups and downs in relationships and stuff, but it's how you amend it. And my kids are sort of, the small, small one is sort of, leaning more towards my sort of job okay. industry, but I'm trying not to, <laughs> I'm trying to keep him on the normal sports, you know, but whatever he wants to do one day, that's for him to decide. And obviously, Cody went for his checkup, for his heart checkup on Tuesday last week, and uh, all looks well, and uh, he won't need another surgery, which we're all so blessed for and grateful for. So from here on in, Warren, it's all systems go, you know, and then getting to my wife, she's like the rock of the family. She takes care of us, obviously, and uh, now that she's finally qualified and got her degree behind her and uh, starts work on the 2nd of January already. So. It's all systems go for the real family at the moment, and, you know. And the, the, the family down in the Cape, your brother and everybody there also follow your every move and... They're all 110% behind me. They're all always messaging, checking how I'm doing, how's the rehab going. Obviously, my eldest brother, his son, the whole family basically looks okay. sort of to me as the one for the family, you know. They're always watching my racing. Yes. And then obviously my wife's family, a mom, uh, two sisters, 99%. We are all together all the time. And uh, obviously we, mi we miss my late father-in-law. It's been a year now. Sure. Uh, yesterday was a year. Wow, where you is know? the year gone? Yeah. It's gone so quickly. It's actually, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. But uh, he was basically probably my best friend, one of my biggest supporters. Obviously, my brother's also big supporters. Yes. But he was that guy who would criticize me and say to me, hey, you're riding this, or I think you can win this race. And I would be like, oh, no, i got a chance here. And <laughs> then if the horse wins, then obviously I have to always so put, my pride in, to, yeah. put my pride in my <laughs> pocket, you know. But, uh, you know, we, we are a close family. And uh, that is majority of the time we're spending time together. Yes. And uh, that's also what's motivated me to Obviously, my mother-in-law is as hard as my wife. She <laughs> says straight, I wasn't allowed to go back before the doctors because I was ready to come back and the doctor said no. So obviously, with her support and my sister-in-law's and obviously my wife's support and my family's support from Cape Town, all things are looking up and uh, I'm glad to be back. Johnny, just one or two small things, sorry, that have just come to my mind. And uh, we're in the final 150 meters of the, of the podcast. Uh, last night or yesterday, we saw all the racing at, uh, in Hong Kong, international jockeys. Of course, we had our South African competing as well and, and all the other jocks that we follow. Great racing. You must be so proud to, to see your colleagues flying the flag over there. Yes, they all, they're all doing well. All the boys from South Africa. Even Scaris too, you can say, is from South Africa, yes. you know. And uh, obviously, Lyle's doing phenomenally well. Keegan's doing well for himself. Luke's also flying. So they're, they're all doing very well there. And it's just so nice to watch, because I'm a racing fanatic, so I watch all racing yes. regardless. Even our boys in Australia, they're all doing well. So it's always nice to see a South African rider winner somewhere else instead of South Africa, so... I, I watched a race, uh, Keegan's last winner, um, one of his uh, second to last winner, never mind, uh, recently he rode a winner, and um, he came, when he turned into that short straight, I said to myself, again, I didn't plaster it all over Facebook, <laughs> I said to myself, uh, I said to myself, I said, how is he possibly going to win this from that position? He won going away, and it was a phenomenal ride. Um, 
it, it was outstanding because to, to, you've got to be brave to come from, you've got to know your horse, you've got to know the track and the champion that he is. Whoa, he came from an impossible position, absolutely flew up one, one easy and, and it was really a, a proud race. As you say, anybody that passes that line first internationally that comes from South Africa or that's associated with South Africa, we get particularly excited for. He, yes, you know, I don't like Keegan. It's obviously shown it. Good rider. Got his opportunities on one or two horses recently and he's producing the goods, you know. And uh, the same like all the other boys, they've been there longer than Keegan. But Keegan can hold his own anywhere, yes. any South African jockey. Yes. Regardless, they can all ride, all the, all the South African jockeys can ride. And uh, you can see worldwide Warren Kennedy in New Zealand. He's leading the national log there. So all, all systems go for South African jockeys, you know. Um, are you a soccer fan? Oh, you were, you were, there's some activity happened there. You wanted to <laughs> chirp about something. I don't know anything about soccer. I'm a soccer fan, Warren. Obviously, my team, they're not doing that well, but they're not doing too bad or so, Manchester United. Okay. But I was watching on the TV, City got beat last night. So okay. that's another feather in my cap, you know, because I've got a lot of Manchester, uh, City, uh, Manchester City fans. Yes. And uh, so, you know, what's up will be crazy today. <laughs> and so any, any other hobbies? I mean, you, you watch soccer, any other hobbies I know you, you spend? What, what do you like doing with your kids? I mean, do you collect stamps? Do you collect cars? I mean, what any other hobbies? Or? No, you know, Warren, the more time I spend with the kids, obviously, we're into paintballing. So okay, hey, that's interesting. I've got paintball guns and all of these things. And then, obviously, we, we like riding bikes and scooters. Okay. But... Mo mostly just spending time with the kids, you know, yes. and... Uh, so you could say paintballing's a, a big hobby in the VL household. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, okay. and obviously the dad's got his own hobbies. The dad loves smoking hubbly. Okay. And uh, <laughs> sort of the kids know when it's dad's time to relax, they know he's going to have his hubbly and yes. stuff. Yes. And uh, it's sort of... I've been sort of doing this now probably 10 years now, maybe longer. So it's nice to just, just wind down, should I yeah, say, yeah, yeah. you know, from everything. And the more time I spend with my kids, the better. Yes. So the kids are loving that I'm not traveling yet as much <laughs> as I was, but I'll get back into it. Yeah, absolutely. Of course you will now. Color coded always, red, black. Let me see your shoes. What color? Yeah, there's a bit of red, white, red, white. So always attract to your, at the races, you've if it, gloves, are, gloves are the same color as the silks, it's just something that you will never let slide. That is your dress code, color coded to the T. Yeah, Warren, you know, that's just been my, from day one already when I came into the academy, then obviously I did Sean Cormac's kit and he was particular at using different colors when he used to ride. Now he rides just in white, but before he used to have all colors. And like, for me, like now, I'm actually waiting for all my colours to come, all my new colour gloves, because obviously I want to start off fresh again okay. and... Uh, That's so interesting. Get back into it. Last question, uh, Mr. Veal, is your, in your opinion, one of the best horses or the best horse you've sat on? It doesn't have to be in a race, can be at the training track, but or, or just tell us who you, one or two of the best horses you've ridden. You know, Warren, obviously that fully Sumalit, she springs to mind. Yes. She beat the boys four times. She won a group one for me. She won a group two. She won a listed. Two listed, actually. And uh, obviously, captain of all. Yes. Good sprinter. We know we're got getting a bit old when you, 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 <laughs> you hear the trainers say, when you ride the stallions and, and, and the, the progeny of the stallions. You know, before... I was a bit heavy and then obviously got the opportunity to ride work for Dennis Dreyer and obviously had that fully uh, captain of all yes. was, was it in the same beach beauty, yeah, yeah. all in the same vein and then obviously uh, what was that sprinting fully's name now? Um, Valdera. Valdera, that's right. Yeah, I got Valdera. to ride Valdera at work here. So I've, I've associated myself with a strong team. And when Mr. Jai was powerful, we had the stock to go with it, you know, the master of my fates. Sure. Got to, got to sit on a couple of them, you know. Lady in black, 
obviously yeah. springs to mind. Yes, yes. Bambina stripes, sure. shower the order. Sure. The list is so long, yeah. Warren. I can go through it, you know, and uh, I, I sort of pace myself to hopefully find a horse like that one yes, day. Yes. But as long as I can find one to win me a feature race every season, yeah. I'm very happy. <laughs> Jeez, unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Well, Sean, that's, that's really the, the We've been sitting already for nearly an hour and, and, and to talk and we could go on for another hour, but we can't just for time restrictions. But all that's left for me is to, is to say thank you for your time and, and, and thank you for your positivity and your vibe and your, you know, your will to, 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 to fight on and, and win and to serve your family because it's very honorable um, and it's, it's a motivation for many out there. It's certainly motivation for me anyway. Um, and we wish you all the very best. We're glad that you're back and, and we're just glad that you, you're ready to fire up the next winner and many more to come. So to you and your family, all the best. And, and we just be watching you as we've been watching you from day one with great interest. Thank you, Warren, for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Oh, fantastic, Sean. Yeah, that's Sean Veal. And uh, yep, Andrew Harrison, as I said, is not with us. Just quickly before we wrap up a couple of things. Uh, there is the score eight soccer bet where there has been 400,000 Rand injected into that pool. So 400,000 Rand injected into the score eight soccer bet. So make sure to get those bets on for your soccer. Then, of course, this weekend, as we've mentioned earlier on, no KZN racing. We race in KwaZulu-Natal next week, Wednesday. But plenty of racing. It's the World Sports Betting Heritage Race meeting uh, up at uh, the Vaal on the High Felt on Saturday. And then, of course, the uh, meeting down at... Um, uh, Hollywood bets Kenilworth uh, where you've heard Sean say that uh, there's the big sprint race down there as well so plenty of racing action so all that's left for me is to thank you the public uh, for your continued support we're inching closer to Christmas we're going to try our very best to get Andrew Harrison to dress up as Father Christmas do you think that's going to happen? <laughs> That'll be a classic. <laughs> That'll be a classic. So we're going to try and get Andrew Harrison to dress up as Father Christmas I'm going to I've already told him twice that he has to do it and I can't tell you the response because uh, <laughs> we're not allowed to swear uh, so but i want to keep trying we've got to get andrew into into a father christmas uniform I'll, I'll maybe match him i'll dress into a christmas uniform if he does but the most important thing is to get him into a christmas uniform but that's a wrap from all of us at in the box Eat podcast to the team behind the scenes thank you uh, race well uh, punt well uh, be nice uh, be safe that's the most important thing and we'll see you as always from the number one box Thank you for watching this week's episode of In the Box Seat Podcast right until the very end. We hope that you enjoyed it because we certainly did. If you missed last week's podcast, In the Box Seat Podcast with Andrew and myself, please go and watch it here. And uh, last week's uh, episode will be right there for you to go and enjoy and watch as uh, we know you will certainly enjoy In the Box Seat Podcast from last week.